A road trip to heaven? What a great destination. I did a Google search for road trip. It's a popular term. The basic definition is that if you go from A to B and it's for pleasure and you stop to smell the roses, then it's a road trip. But if you're going from A to B, the shortest, fastest route is not considered a road trip. The Christian life could be considered a road trip. There is pleasure, but there is also troubles and sorrows and difficulties. We are not trying to get the fastest route to heaven, but we are trying to find the one way to begin the trip. The basic ideas are found in the book of Romans written by the Apostle Paul. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This may be the hardest step of the trip. You may consider yourself a good person. I remember my grandma saying, well, I never killed anyone. But God is perfectly holy, and none of us measures up to his standards. So first, we must admit that we are sinners. We not only make mistakes, but we deliberately choose to do what we want regardless of God's perfect directions. It all started in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. Adam and Eve had a great location, a great relationship with the Father, and with each other. Work was a pleasure, and they could stop and smell the roses. But then Eve listened to the wrong directions. Satan lied to her and said, you can be like God, knowing good and evil. This is the ever-repeating temptation for every man, that you can decide for yourself what is right and wrong. How familiar these words are in our culture today. Whatever you decide is good for you. You can't tell me what is wrong. That may be okay for you, but I was born this way. A decision to go your own way is called sin in the Bible. So the first stop on the road to heaven is knowing you are a sinner. And this is so serious when we see the next verse. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. This second stop is also very difficult for many to accept. They may ask, how can a good God condemn people? God is also the perfect, just judge. He cannot let the guilty go unpunished. And you must realize you earn the consequence of your decisions, and that is death. Death means separation. Separation from God is spiritual death. Separation from your earthly body comes eventually, and then eternal separation from all that is good. But God loves man and offers a way of escape from the wages of sin. It is not earned. It is a gift. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I grew up in the church, but I didn't really understand the death on the cross. My whole life changed when I read an ex explanation of Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. Here they are in the New Living Translation. You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. He took away the account of our sins. In the Roman days, when a prisoner was put into prison, his list of uh, things wrong were put on a paper and then nailed to the door of his cell. When he was released, the words, it is finished, were written across that paper and then handed to him. Then if he was out in the community and someone said, why are you out here? He could show them that paper and said, it is finished, I am free. 
In the same way, all of my sins were written out and nailed to the cross, so that when Jesus died, he could cry out and say, it is finished, set her free. We have to accept the bad news to get to the good news on this gospel road. That is why Romans 10, 9 begins with confess. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You won't be saved by trying to do what is good. It is not a balance of good works against the bad. We confess our need of a Savior and then believe Jesus died for us, but also lives that we may live. Notice it says confess that he is Lord. We must surrender our life to him. Stop going our own way. Jesus re preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. To repent means change one's mind or turn and go in another direction. We were going down the highway to hell. Now we turn in sorrow over our sinful lives. We believe that Jesus broke the power of sin on the cross, and now we go in a new direction of new life. It's all about faith. How do you do this? Well, you can pray right now. Prayer is just approaching God with an honest heart and telling him that you are a sinner, that you need his salvation, that you believe in him, you want his forgiveness. You could pray a prayer like this. God, I know that I am a sinner. I am deserving of punishment. But Jesus Christ took the death that I deserved. So now, through faith in him, I am forgiven. I place my trust in you for salvation. Thank you for your wonderful grace and the new life that you are giving me. Amen. Your prescription for joy today is to begin your journey as a child of God. And then there is so much more to learn as you walk with him and other believers. Your great GPS will be the Bible and your guide is the Holy Spirit. Learn no more next week when we talk about the best road trip ever. Please share this with others.